you're going to learn here is kata bait. It's beautiful. It's flowing, and you, it's going to be freaking hard to master this. Or I'm teaching that, or I'm teaching you're going to be self-defense. I mean, is there a responsibility? And the reason I say that is for myself, when I first got into Aikido, you know, I just kind of wandered into it, my family and I. And at the end of the day, somewhere along the way, I, I thought, hey, man, I'm learning to defend myself, you know. And then all of a sudden, I started hearing, hey, you're not learning to defend yourself. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then years and years, you start kind of putting all this together. And I'm kind of wondering, and I, as a dojo cho, I look at that seriously, and I start thinking, well, what are the expectations of people who come to my dojo, right? And I would say, for me personally, about 90, 95%, I'm dealing with people who think they're going to learn to defend themselves. But I also, at the same time, I have other people from other arts with high black belt rankings, all different kinds, who come to me, and they're like, I'm not really caring about defending myself. It's like what uh, Sensei Aaron said. I'm coming here because there's something more to this Aikido stuff. You know, I know my, one of my students goes, hey, man, I know how to fight. I can ground, pound, choke you out, all of that. But what you just did, what the heck was that? How the hell did you capture my balance like that and be in a position where you could tag me, right? So do you feel that there's that responsibility? And I know we talked about this a little bit more, but I, I, we had time to think about it. Uh, Steve, I see you on screen right now, so go for it, buddy. Um, absolutely. I mean... They got to know what kind of book they're buying. Uh, it is our duty to explain to them in the beginning. Um, here's what we do here. And um, the, the, the student will try it, stick with it, or he won't. Aikido is such an intellectual art. That's why we don't have, you know, hundreds and hundreds in one dojo. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people just want to get in, work out, and leave and do that punch kick stuff. We don't offer that. It, yeah. It's not easy. To give a, a, a kick out, the uh, BJJ, that's a very intellectual um area too and um so i just want to make sure that you know it can be low numbers but it can be high numbers too because i've seen a lot of um uh these dojos that are pretty high it's very seldom you see a lot of aikido in there unless they're at a seminar so i just yeah. feel that we have to you know share that um well let me ask you, let me, oh, Aaron, you want to go for it with the question yeah so i mean so okay so aikido and this and that but i mean if we're talking bjj right brazilian jiu-jitsu its primary focus is on the ground right so in a dojo it starts on the ground mm -hmm. right these guys they tap they're on their knees if you want to roll let's fight right. and they start on their knees and they're on the mat and then they 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 start their contact and they start rolling right so if if you're mugged by a bunch of street punks are you going to tie up with one of them? Yeah. yeah. We so, know that so, that's not going to happen. So we don't want to talk bad about one art or the other, but, but we're, right. we're defending Aikido, but, but it's like, okay, the BJJ is the top thing right now, right? You got the MMA art, but you got BJJ um, that's come up with UFCs and all that, that, that other stuff. It's, it, it was, it's popular. But yes, okay, we, so the core pop, this popular art and, and it, it's, the premise is to, to tangle somebody up on the ground and submit them on the ground. Yeah. You know, I actually, I, is that a self, def is that truly self-defense when, when you're by yourself and you, you're getting mugged by two or three people now, but we're not asking that about that art. Right. So, so well, let me, let me interject on that. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Eddie Bravo from, uh, uh, I think it's called planet 10, uh, uh Jiu Jitsu or Jocko. He's a, a pod, podcast, very uh, Navy SEAL, everything. And I must give um, credit out to them because they come out and say, you, you don't want to be on the ground with that guy's buddy. And I just recently saw a video where uh, that was brought out by, uh, it's called, I don't know if you heard about this. Look it up. I'm going to give a, a shout out to this guy. It's called MMA. And what it is, is I believe it's Mexican Martial Aikido or something like that. And uh, it's really good. I can't. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong to this uh, gentleman, but I would say look it out. And he shows a video of a person on the ground rolling with them right on the streets. He's a jiu jitsu, and his, the guy who's getting um, beat up, wife comes over and kicks the BJ guy in the face, and he's out cold. <laughs> and what I must admit is that in BJJ, they do stand up and they go, "Hey, in a street situation, one or two people." 
you know, this isn't uh, uh, very cool. But um, can I get us back to the topic, though? The topic yes. was does the dojo cho have the responsibility to give uh, buyer disclosure? I think so. I think I think uh, I think any uh, you know, if you're running a dojo, you're fielding these students coming in, whatever art. You need to kind of tell them. So if it's the, the, the conundrum we just talked about, you know, well, that might be something to mention. What we're talking about with our topic, um, you know, particularly it's like, look, if you're wanting to, you know, what are you looking for? What do you, you're what are you hoping to accomplish? Because if you are looking to tangle up and, you know, you want to be a cage fighter, this probably isn't the right place, but you want to, you want to, learn some good stuff, learn some self-defense because it is there. It, it, it is there and, and it's up to the instructor to teach it. So, so if, if, if you're an Aikido student and you're not getting the instruction that you think you should, it's not Aikido. You can change instructors as well. So not every instructor ha puts as much weight on this as, as, as others do. Some people, they, they're developing the beauty and you can see that in karate or see it in a Another case is like a, a point fighter. You got somebody, they're, they're a striker, striker, but they're conditioned to not punch somebody in the face. Yeah, very so good. So if your whole art and your competition and everything, but your condition in your head to not hit somebody in the face, what happens when it all comes down on the street? Mm -hmm. Your training is what is what comes out. So it's true for all of us, not just I, I agree. We're not the only ones here. We have company. So, we so have so company. So what that you just say okay. that. So I believe it is true that, that the Dojo Cho or whoever is fielding that student, they need to be honest with, with what the expectations are and what that teacher can deliver, uh, particularly based on what the goals are of that student. Can that Very teacher good. deliver what that student is looking for? Mm -hmm. To see That's if the answer is there, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear you. I'm wanting to chime in on that, Steve. Go for it, buddy. Real quick. Um, to me, Aikido is like courting. Um, when a student comes to you, it's, it's, it's a relationship and you, you're dating. So the first one, two years, whatever you want to call it, you're dating. You want to really see if you want to marry it. And that, at least my experience with it. And I fell in love with it and I put a ring around it and I married it and I continued on. Um, but everybody has to date that person to see if it's going to be for them. And uh, yeah, each dojo can be different. Sure, as we know, it's a smorgasbord of uh, <laughs> instructors out there. But uh, the dojo, you don't know till you date the girl and take her out. Yes. By a class, okay. by several. Did, that, uh, did your woman that you married wanted you to get out? <laughs> As a keto trying, get out of here, you bum. <laughs> story. Yeah, you have your days when you know you get in fights. You have your days where you're not in a good mood there. You have days where things are great. Other days, uh, the silent treatment. <laughs> I mean, we, we've all come to it like, do I want to stay with this? I mean, there was times when I first started um, our dojo, like, I don't know about this, you know, mm -hmm. but I stuck it through. And yeah, then that's yeah. the best thing that ever happened to all of us, of course. You know, um, the reason I think it's important to address this thing with um, the dojo chos or the uh, instructors to be really honest is because I think it deals with this issue about clarity out there on YouTube. It gets to the point where an Aikido, at least what I'm seeing us beginning to deal with is say, hey, Aikido is both of these things. It is just an art. It, it gives this beautiful, deeper principles, but that doesn't mean it's weak and it doesn't have anything because you get these high ranking people from other arts coming in going, I wanna know what that is. And I think we need to stand up and be proud of that and say, yeah, that's what's going on here. Now, is it really done taught well, everything? That's a different beast all the way to where we're saying, well, this is a self-defense and this is why we believe it's a self-defense. Not to defend ourselves so much, but to be able to enter into the conversation. You know, um, I, I've heard uh, this area and I just want to put it in there. Um, a lot of uh, Aikido, because it's a spiritual thing, we line up with a lot of them are as Zen. You know, well, the Zen, be quiet, middle ground. I don't have to talk. I don't have to engage. And there's a point to that. But personally, I've been um, studying Zen and uh, teaching it for like 25 years, 30 years. And the bottom line, I have never found Zen to be mediocre. Never seen where it isn't full in your face telling it like it is. With the middle ground concept of not engaging is, uh, we, I don't think we can hide behind that it's a spiritual, you know, we don't have to deal with it. 
And I think since uh, uh, YouTube and Vimeo and all that, it's tearing down the house and um, leads into this um, next topic. I'll, I'll get off my soap opera on that. Uh, two more topics and we're done, guys. One, how to teach practical self-defense Aikido <laughs> in a traditional Aikido setting. So we kind of define um, uh, traditional. And now I believe that the traditional is really good. You know, and I teach it as such as a platform leading that these are foundational areas and allowing the student to move into more deeper area. But um, I think those uh, senseis and those dojos that are kind of looking at it going, hey, I think I'd like to get that in there, you know. And, the, and the, let me get set the stage. So you have time restraint. You have uh, students coming in, maybe you got an hour with the class. Uh, usually first class, sometimes 10, 15 minutes of warm ups. You know, and this is another elephant area, maybe an hour and a half. So complex art. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how the heck do you time manage this um, beast if you really want to get that? Um, go ahead, Steve. So are you saying that um, if we want to teach a harder core self-defense, how do we integrate that into our uh, daily teaching schedule? Is that what you're yeah, kind of saying? Um, I thank you for, I need better clarification. You're right, buddy. So let's say I'm, I'm teaching my students, for example, uh, first, seventh cue, Katatori, Ikkyo, Omote, you know, dynamic, right? And we're doing it and we're learning in it. And now my student looks at me and says, hey, what happens if someone comes up and gives you, wow, how, how do I get into an Ikkyo there? Now, how the heck am I going to get that in an, a class that's an hour where I got, you know, 10 students on the mat, different rankings, you know, how do you deal with this creature? Very simple. Um, you keep the beginning class, uh, the basics like you just did, and the advanced class, what I do, um, it's a um, good point where you just stated, because um, that what I've been doing for the last year, I do Katatori Ikkyo, the Mote beginning class, and then we'll do Katatori Ikkyo Amote from a hardcore strike, from a kick, from a different angle, but we're sticking to the subject of Aikido. At the same time, we can do Katatori Ikkyo Amote really hard. See, this is the harder way of doing it. We can do it the nice way. Now we're moving up to the advanced class. We have a little more control and uh, we can do it the hard way. So they're learning both right there with me. So you're separating your classes up, keeping the more traditional. Oh, in the, uh, they don't have the experience of, of falling. They don't have experience of, of how to get the 80-20 uh, movement in their body. Um, Where's the entry point to advanced class? What ranking are you looking at? That's an individual thing because we got some brown belts. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and yet some, you know, blue belts that are very advanced. Um, you just It's an individual thing. Got it. How about you, Aaron? Be around brown belt, you know. <laughs> You know, with the, the what ifs from the students, I think, you know, it's, it's the, the reality is yeah, that the what if from the students. Yeah, yeah, the reality is that not every, not every technique is going to be good for every attack, right? Mm -hmm. So, so to do, to try to pull out Ikkyo on, say, a, a forward kick or something, you're not, Ikkyo is not necessarily going to be the best technique to choose based on a particular attack. So that's right. like the, 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 the system itself isn't broken, but if, if certain things are needed, that's where the insight of the instructor can come in and say, look, okay, well, really, you know, this technique's going to be better. Or to be honest and say, well, we have a lot of techniques, but, but there, there's, a, there's a handful of them that, that are almost foolproof. And then there are others that, that take a little more finesse to pull off. You have to be a little more skilled to pull this technique off than this technique from this. So, and then when we're teaching juniors to, to seniors, it's like, it's the method of the, the delivery. So, so if we want self-defense in my, in my belief is we simplify things. Mm -hmm. So if you want self-defense, you start, you start bringing the bar down and you start simplifying what you're delivering. You start simplifying your movements and then you increase your intensity on what you're doing. Okay. And you, you raise that intensity because not everybody, you know, a Friday night class, everybody's worked all week. Sometimes we, we, we want to kind of have fun on the mat and we don't necessarily want to lose. You're coming in and training three, four, five times a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. To have the, the, the boom, boom training every single day 
and you've been training for 25, 30 years, uh, maybe not. But bad. if you're a brand, if you're 20, if you're 18, 17, you're coming in and you want martial arts, well, that teacher, when I get somebody like that coming in, well, I start pounding on these guys. Not me physically pounding on them, but I start giving them the class where they start taking some pounding. They start beating their body up a little. They're young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, you know, start getting pounded a little bit. Don't get af- Don't be afraid of the mat. Mm-hmm. Increase the intensity, right? Increase. What's going on during a, a regular class? So you're kind of basing. You know, you started off, and as you. So it's not like you're having an advanced class, separation class, or anything like that? No, I, from my perspective is that the, the senior students have to suck it up for the junior students. Mm-hmm. So, so if you got the new, the new guy coming in, the new person, female, male, you know, they're coming in, well, you kind of got to take care of that. And so the way I've done this in the past is I've separated the class. Yes. And I've, I'll, I'll, I'll run two classes at the same time where I'll have senior black belts over here and maybe they can do whatever they want that class. Mm-hmm. Or I give them a technique and then have them start spinning off oil wazes or something like that over here. And then on this side of the mat, we're doing Ikkyo with this guy, his number one technique, and he's doing forward rolls in Ikkyo. Right. And that's what he gets in my class for his first three weeks. Mm-hmm. So he comes in and he's taking falls and he's gotten one technique. Right. I'll try to give him a smorgasbord. So yeah, it's overwhelming. Now, he's got one thing. Yeah. Now he's got one thing. And as far as the intent, I'm so That's from a self-defense perspective, though, I think you increase that intensity mm-hmm. and and um you simplify things. And self-defense is about simple, easy, simple, easy. It's not about mm-hmm. complex things. Yes. My opinion. Yeah. Um I I agree with um um uh, there are those advanced class because you got to have, you, you can't be dealing with, you know, I think uh, 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 Christian uh, T. Sierra said it really well. He says, hey, you can't get a, a rookie tennis player working with another advanced tennis player. You know, it, it helps this guy to grow, but this guy's going to just die. Right? Sure. So it's got to be that time when we're rocking, we're throwing. Uh, I have really for years and years explored with the uh, two classes on the mat at one time. And, uh, and I even got it up to three classes at one time, and it worked really well for me. So I can have all kinds of stuff. A matter of fact, in my dojo, everybody is training different techniques at one time on the mat. You know, and so this is an, another expression. Um, hey, uh, the last question. Did you have anything to interject more on that, Steve? Uh, no. I, I, oh, okay, buddy. I, I didn't want to yeah. make sure. But that would be but another. I, top, that'd be another topic. Is you know how do we transition students? At what point do we move them, not move them? Where do we, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think this is a, a, a very good, um, um, another elephant in there. Okay, this is the final one. What are the repercussions to the art if we do not take uh, this topic seriously? I got to admit, by the time we got through all this, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't, I think we took it pretty freaking serious out here. Um, I don't know how to really go more with that topic other than, um, it does seem to me that there's been a, uh, through the years, something happened where the art kind of went a little bit more spiritual, you might say. And then maybe the, uh, the practical application went a little bit hard. And I think it's, um, uh, Sensei Wasserman, you, you dealt with this pretty good on our uh, podcast on striking. And when you first said it, I kind of, eh, that doesn't sound good. But as I meditated more and more on this, you had actually referenced that, um, uh, Kung Fu, heart style, very, you know, strong. And then uh, came out with Tai Chi, yes? Became very softer and softer, right? And um, at first I'm kind of like, hmm, you know, it's pretty cool he's saying that. Um, I kind of feel maybe that happened a little bit with Aikido top heavy, you know? I'm not sure if, are we beginning to make an adjustment or what, what happens if we don't, you know, make an adjustment. Do you see Aikido moving down, becoming too soft, not answering? You know, what's your feeling, I guess? Go well, for it, buddy. Um, do we feel like Aikido is softening up? Is it because we haven't had that many new members overall? And no, I'm talking about more where it's um, lean. Oh, here, better. I, I apologize. Better clarify. It seems to me it's leaning more kata. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, okay, but go ahead, buddy. Is, is the reason why we're not getting that young, 
blood in like we used to over the years. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this a long time, over 20, you know, 25 years. Or, and, and our group is getting older, so we're getting a little less aggressive or doing you know, more mellower stuff. Is that why? That's not my excuse, but I'm just saying I'm seeing that. So that might be one of the reasons. And um, the softening up, are you saying is getting lazier? Um, that's a good point. Go ahead. Um, well, I'm just thinking you know, hey, real quick. I'm sorry about that, guys. That was my phone <laughs> ringing and somehow it messed up the network there. So we'll see what happened. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just thinking as far as, you know, you know, Aikido overall, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it has an, an older population, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway. So, so Aikido anyways has an older population. So I don't think it's, it's out of um, scope to, to see some uh, less intense training sessions when you have a class that's, you know, if you got a class and, and everybody's got 35 or 40 years of Aikido on the mat, mm-hmm. I mean, th- that class has already done their pounding. They've already right. done it. They did it 35 years ago. So, I mean, we have to look at some of this stuff as well. If, if you're a 40-year martial artist, I wouldn't expect that you're, you're probably trying to preserve what you have left versus... Working more finer things than yes. they are. Yeah, yeah that's perfectly all right man yeah well, I, I i do think that um you know and i just want to acknowledge the for anybody that listens and hears this though that yes the discussion is a valid discussion and what we're talking about is real and i i hope that that in this discussion that i've not uh made light of any of these uh, uh observations of the art of aikido um i just don't necessarily agree with I, I understand why some would say that and I can understand but I, I don't think they I, I don't agree with it based on knowing what I know in the training that that, that I've pursued in, in my time um, but I do acknowledge and I would just say to look for the right teacher whatever art that we're training in look for the right teacher and get that person that can deliver what you're looking for it may not be that the arts broken it might be that, that that's the wrong teacher or it, may be, it, it could be that you're in the wrong art in the sense of if there are certain things that you want out of a martial art, you know, m- maybe Aikido doesn't deliver all that, but it doesn't mean that Aikido is not broken. Right. And I think uh, we have to take each martial art and look at it for its strengths and we- weaknesses. And we've had a couple examples in today's call where maybe there's some other arts that Maybe they have their baggage too. They they need to have their discussions just like we need to have our discussions. Right. Very good. And so we're in we're in bed with them. Or we're in uh, in company with them. Put it that way. Now I wanted as we're closing this up, and I thank both of you for your time and your insight. And um, I've known you guys for a long time, and I know you both are um, really dedicated keto s. And I felt you slam me many times, and I felt those joint locks come on, and. Um, that's a whole nother topic for something else. And, uh, but I wanted to share real quick for, I know people out there listening. I know we didn't deal with Aikido is not pressure tested. Aikido is not full speed and contact. Relax. We're going to get to that. We're going to deal with that right now. We're just looking at, is it a self-defense? And you're kind of hearing it from Aikido uh, standpoint and just getting that out there. So uh, in the comment area, please comment, share what you have to feel. And um, we won't look at it. No. <laughs> well, we'll take a look at it. So, hey, both of you senseis, I really appreciate your time and thank you so much. And uh, of course, I know people have seen that great background on um, uh, Aaron's. Yeah, yeah, there. That's from Japan, gang. When he was in Japan, he took that um, picture. Very cool. So, oh, that- Steve and I will be coming back with some not too cool background. Steve has a good background. I like his. Um, so thank you, my friends, and you take care. And I look forward to our, our, our next podcast, Dealing with the Elephants in the Room in Aikido. Thank Absolutely. you, guys. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much.